Notion has just released a feature that I've been waiting for since March 2022, when Notion released, firstly, their API. And it was the last automation capability that I was waiting for. Because so far, Notion has great automations for everything that happens within Notion. But if we wanted to trigger automation that involved other tools from Notion, we didn't really have a good way. There were third-party tools, but they have bugs. And this is what Notion has just released. Now we will be able to trigger automations from Notion that involve other apps. Very soon, I'm also gonna give you some use cases that I'm right now using for my business. So you don't even have to think about everything that just opens up for you to do. And this new feature is called webhooks. But you may be wondering, what is a webhook? Well, a webhook is a URL that an automation program can create so other programs can send data to it. And that's basically it. So in our case, why am I so excited about this? Because automation tools like make.com or Sapier can create those webhook URLs. So tools like Notion can send the data of any of their database records to this webhook URL. And then within make, we can have the trigger being a webhook, and then we can trigger whatever automation. For example, this automation creates a contract for the lead that have triggered this automation from within Notion. I'm gonna show you in a little bit how to do that. Because before, what happened? We could have a trigger in Make that will trigger whenever something is modified within Notion. But the way that it worked is that we will have to set a frequency for that trigger. So let's say every 15 minutes or every hour, that is going to be checking Notion's database to see if there has been any change. And then we have to filter the change that we are looking for. For example, a status change. But now with webhooks, we can actually just trigger this automation when, for example, that status changes to this particular status and it is going to be instantaneously. Before, it would have been very, very expensive to do this because we will have to query the database over and over and we will be charged for all those queries and most of them are going to be empty. But now we can do this instantaneously and almost for free. Okay, so let's say how to set this up inside of Notion. There are currently two ways to trigger a webhook. The first one is through these automations. And this only works in, in databases, of course. So we could do things such as if we have a lead over here with an email, for example, we will click here on the little thunder and this brings up these, these automations. Here, when we can select which is going to be the trigger. For example, it can be when the status is in progress. And then we have this send webhook action where we will have to drop the URL from Make or Sapier or whatever automation tool we're going to be sending this data to. And we will have to select here which data we are going to be sending to that automation tool. So how are we going to get this URL? Well, I'm going to put the example of make.com, which is the automation tool that I use almost all the time. In a new scenario, we will have this option right here, custom webhook, and then we will just have to create the webhook save and this is going to give us a url we'll have to copy the address here and just paste it over here we can select all the properties that we want to send to the webhook and create so now whenever this status is going to move to in progress this automation is going to trigger and this is going to receive the data that is it he's received the, the data and now from here we have the data from that record and we can build whatever automation we want with the thousands and thousands of integrations that uh, make.com has another way to trigger webhooks is via buttons so we could have a button property and if we edit the automation the trigger is whenever the button is clicked and here we can also send a webhook. We can send it to the same, same, and that's it. So this is useful whenever we want to trigger an automation automatically. Let's say, I don't know, this is gonna be create invoice, for example. So we will click here, take all the data from this particular record and the automation on the other side this one is going to create an invoice with an invoicing software or even using Google Docs, a template or something. So this is very useful for whenever we want to trigger things manually. And the third way that we can trigger webhooks is via a button situated, whatever. When button is clicked, we can send a webhook with the, all the same data. And this button is going to send to the webhook the data of the page that the button 
is in. So basically this and this, since both point to the same webhook URL, these two buttons are gonna do exactly the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the main use cases that I'm using webhooks for. Within my leads database, I have a status property with all these different statuses. So I want to create contracts automatically from here. So just with a click of a button, this lead is gonna have the contract for the services that I'm gonna provide to him. So this is gonna reduce so much the time spent on creating those contracts. Here also the magic sauce is to be able to have a contract for the services that you provide that can serve every one of your leads. So this is the work that I've done prior setting up this automation. And now the only thing that I have to do is to change this to contract sent. And now this email is gonna receive an email with the done for you contract that I have built. The automation is this one over here. Whenever the webhook comes here, depending on the type of contract that this guy is going to have, which is over here, I have different kinds of contracts, it's going to send one or the other. And here I have the automation that have just been triggered. Another automation that I have is to send payment links to my clients. Since my prices vary, so I have all the variables that I need for the price inside of my leads record. This is how I have it set up, how much they're gonna pay per installment and how many installments they are going to have. So with this information, I have just to change the status to payment link sent, and this is going to trigger this beauty of an automation. This is done in Zapier, but you see, it doesn't really matter because all these automation tools can catch webhooks. And then depending on whether it's full or payment plan or something, then this is going to create the product in Stripe, create the price in Stripe and create the payment link and send that link on an email to the client. So this easily saves me like 15 minutes every time that this automation runs and I just have to change a status here. Or even better, I have a button over here that kicks off this automation. I have built for some clients even like creating reports of data that they have within Notion so they can send to a client. Because then for example, imagine that you trigger this automation from a client's record and that client is linked to all the tasks that you have done in the past week let's say. So with a button, you could generate a report of all the tasks that you have done for the past week, convert it into PDF and send it to the client automatically just with a click of a button. Like, I don't know if you are starting to see it, but like the capabilities of these right now is they're unlimited. Even we can use this to trigger AI workflows. So let's say that we are using Notion for creating content. We have some ideas within a record and we want to use a chat GPT automatically. So it condenses all these ideas and brings us like the concise best idea or something like this. So we could trigger this from Notion, then make is gonna call chat GPT with the same prompt and then, and then it's going to bring the answer back to Notion in like 10 seconds. So well, if you find more use cases, please drop them in the comments. There are thousands. Well, if you have liked this automation, this is what I've been doing for almost five years, helping businesses with their systems. If you wanna know the process that we always follow that never fails to systemize a service business, you will find in the description of this video, the process that we always follow, so you can follow it too. And well, that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.